If you've ever had just a little bit too much to drink and you decide that you want to sit down and write a piece, and at the time you think it's just the best music that you've ever written, but then the next day you come back to it and realize that what you wrote was a load of hot garbage, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hi, I'm Ryan Thomas with 8DO, and this video is the product walkthrough for the 8DO Warm Studio Solo Bass Clarinet. Man, that's a mouthful. And this library is, of course, a solo bass clarinet library that is part of the Warm Studio Woodwind series. So you've got uh, perfect symmetry between all the articulations in all the other instruments and the bass clarinet. So it works really well when you are writing for the section, when you've got all of the woodwinds in this series, and uh, they sound really beautiful together. I hope to do a video, you know, maybe later on, uh, showing you how all the woodwinds can be used together as a woodwind section. And in this video, what we're gonna do is just explore the interface. We are going to explore all the articulations so you can hear every articulation at least once. Uh, and then I'm just gonna show you a couple examples of how you can uh, mix and match those articulations to uh, you know, create some actual compositions uh, so you can see those articulations in action. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. So I'm going to start here with an empty instance of contact, so I can show you the different patches that you can load up. Uh, this first one here is just going to pull up a totally empty articulation set, and you can populate it however you want to by just double-clicking on any of the slots and uh, picking an articulation from any of these four categories. So uh, you can build your own custom key switches from scratch, or if you want to just get uh, you know a quick start, you can pull up the prearranged patch, which comes pre loaded with a lot of the more common articulations that you're going to use when writing for the bass clarinet. And you can still switch these out for any of the other articulations if you want to. Uh, it's just a way to get started very quickly. If you don't want to mess with any key switching or anything like that, you can just pull up an individual patch, you know, or if you just want to use uh, one articulation and you want to save on the RAM. So uh, you can just pull up any of these. Now the interface is uh, pretty self-explanatory. I don't really think, you know, there's no sub panels or sub sub panels that you have to go through to hunt for different controls. Everything is pretty much just right here. And in the instrument panel here, you've got the mic position knob, the basic pan control and a basic volume control. And that's pretty much it. So now let's just go ahead and start auditioning these articulations. Uh, while the interface is very beautiful, of course, we are all interested in how the instrument sounds. So let's go ahead and check those out. So we're just gonna start off here in the traditional articulations and work our way down, starting with the staccato. And this is the staccatissimo. And this is the staccatissimo 2, which as opposed to the regular staccatissimo, this is just going to give you more of a clipped ending. And this is the Marcano, which is going to give you a nice attack and a, a fairly long release. And these are the sustains. And these are the vibrato sustains. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, we're very anxious to hear the legato. I think it's kind of the beating heart of the library. <laughs> Just beautiful and so easy to play. Uh, there's really not much that the legato can't do. Uh, so this is gonna be the whole note trill. And this is the half note trill. And that is gonna do it for the traditional articulations. Let's check out the arcs. And uh, these are just really special articulations that 8DO has really kind of become known for. And for those of you who might not be familiar with how the arcs work, it's essentially a swell that is actually created by the player when they record the note, uh, rather than being created by crossfading between different dynamics layers using CC1. So this first one here is gonna be the short arc. And this is the medium arc. These are just really inspirational. And this is the long arc. Okay, now let's move on to the performance articulations. And these are going to be uh, tempo synced pre-recorded phrases. So this first one here is the measured tremolo. And this is the tuplet. And these are the triplets. And these are the da da's.
and that is gonna do it for the performance articulations. Finally, we have the effects. And these are just a ton of fun. They can add a ton of color to your writing. And this first one here is gonna be the flutter tongue. And then we have the scoops. And these are the slow descending runs playing a fifth. And these are the slow ascending runs playing a fifth. And these are the fast descending runs playing a fifth. And these are the fast ascending runs playing a fifth. These are the descending slow octave runs. These are the slow ascending octave runs. These are the fast octave descending runs. And finally, these are the ascending fast octave runs. So now you've heard all the articulations, let's go ahead and check out some of these musical examples that are gonna show you those articulations in action. And I tried to kind of keep this in the style of the bass clarinet. So here is our first example. And you can see where the articulation changes are happening right here. And I just realized that I didn't actually program in any breaks for the poor bass clarinet player to breathe. So we're just going to assume that uh, they were using circular breathing. Uh, let's check out this next example here. So all the articulations just integrate with each other really well. I like having so many articulations because it just gives you more freedom when you are writing. I wanna show you one other thing and that is how the mic position affects the sound because you do get two very different sounds. And we'll just go back to this first example here and I'm going to change the mic settings in real time so that you can hear exactly how it affects the sound. So we're gonna start with 100% close mic and by the end of the example, you'll only be hearing the room mic. So the two different sounds, and of course the way that you can mix uh, the mic positions, just gives you a lot of freedom in terms of what contexts you can use this library in. I think it would work really well in an orchestral context, and of course it would work really well in a very intimate studio context. So that is actually gonna do it for the video. I hope this was informative and you had a good time. And I wanna thank you so much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.